Hey everybody, and welcome to part 25, I believe it is actually, of my um, pre-algebra tutorial. In this part, we're going to do a focus on, on isolation with many variables. I don't feel like writing it. Um, isolation with many variables really isn't that different than isolation with two variables. The only real difference is that you're doing a lot more work in order to solve a single variable and you're trying to move a lot more stuff. We're going to do um, two or three examples and that's about it. There's really nothing more to explain. It's just looking at things from a different way. So let's say I had 2x plus 3y and I'm going to throw in z too. So 5z. I'm going to start putting a dash to my z because that way you can differentiate between a z and a 2 or any other variables. Um, I'm going to want to add a constant here to throw it up a little bit more. Uh, minus 4 equals 2x minus 3y. And let's say I wanted to isolate for... Um, not z, let's, let's go with y. I wanted to isolate for y. Um, uh, sorry, my blank. Um, so we want to also isolate for y. So my first step is going to be to add 3y to both sides. Um, Actually, let's not do that. Let, let's let's not make it on the left side. Let's do one on the right side just to see, um, just, just 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 to show it off because I usually um, keep mine on the left side, but I'll, I'll do it on the right side right now. So um, if I'm going to go on the right side, which means I want to have all, everything on the right side go away, I'm going to also want to subtract 2x, and I'm going to want to take the 2x from this side. So then this is going to cancel out. And then this is going to cancel out, and then we're just left with 5z. Not bad at all. Oh, nope, we're not. Actually, hold your horses. Um, we are left with 5z minus 4, and that's going to be equal to minus 6y. Because 3 plus 3 is 6, if I'm correct. I should be. And now I'm going to divide by negative 6 on both sides. So why I'm multiplying by why I'm divided by a, a negative six instead of just a plain old six is because it really kills two birds with one stone. It makes um it uh it it makes y positive and it makes y have a coefficient of one. So this is gonna cancel out and we are gonna get our answer to be y equals something. And uh, f uh so that'd be negative so that'd be five six five z divided by six and five five z divided by negative six. I'm gonna I, I should just write I'll just write this out a little bit. 5z divided by negative 6, which becomes, in turn, uh, it, you can make it into five, negative 5 6 z. Um, we'll go into uh, fractions of, actually, you should already know that. And that's a, that's a really cool trick that we can use. And generally in algebra, you always write things as coefficients. You don't really write them as fractions much, except if you're constant fractions. You don't really like, like you know. Anyway, so it becomes negative 5 6 z. And then these become positive, and then it becomes uh, plus 4, 6, which is uh, simplified 2 thirds. So then we get uh, y equals negative 5, 6, z plus 2 thirds equals y. Now, I want I specifically chose this equation to have 2x and 2x on the both sides because this presents a really uh, odd scenario in which the x's have appeared to disappear have disappeared on both sides and they're left with nothing. Now this is why I wanted to actually have a focus on on this because I actually wanted to explain about more than simply just isolation with many variables. Now let's say I had the following scenario 2x plus 3y I seem to have 2x plus 3y stuck in my head a lot and let's just say it was equal to 2x plus 3y again actually let's not do that that's way blatantly too obvious Actually, this entire thing is a little too obvious. Let's let's go again. I want to see. I want to show you guys that this could happen. So two x plus x plus six y. There, I changed it. Equals um three y. And let's say I wanted to isolate. Hmm, actually, we have to make this three x. Never show this off. Let's say I wanted to isolate x. What I do is first I'd combine my like terms because that's just how I roll. I'd, I'd like to combine my like terms and get in the simplest form before I solve out my equation. And let's say I wanted to isolate x. Well, let's say, I mean, if I wanted to put it on the right or if I wanted to put it on the left, either way, I'm going to have to subtract 3x from one side. But the problem is, no matter where I subtract 3x from, let's say I subtracted 3x from the right side first or I subtracted 3x from the left side first, it doesn't really matter. Either way, my 3x's are canceling out. So really, it becomes 6y equals 3y. And 
So our answer to this is not separable. So not every equation is separable. Not every equation will have an x and a y in an answer. And that's where you really have to become mathematicians when you understand what to diagnose from your answer. What you're getting right now is that the three x's really just cancel each other out, so there's no point in having an x. And it really makes sense. If you have three x on one side and adding three x on one side, it's really just excess. You don't need it. So, um, yeah. Let's go on to uh, one more equation with um, multiple variables. Let's do 2y this time. Let's change it up a little bit. Plus 3x. Yeah, I changed that up a bunch. Minus 5z plus 4n equals 62p plus 3x plus 9y plus 7. And let's say now I wanted to solve... Uh, to simplify for, let's, let's pick the oddest variable. Let's pick p. This is the real brainer. This is the real thing that's going to make us, make or, make or break us. Now, if I'm going to solve for p, I'm going to want to, um, let, let's write this a little bit more conjoined. I'm going to, I'm sorry, guys, this is going to, this is wasting a bunch of time. Minus 5z plus 4. I just wanted to make sure that I have my equation written in, um, written out in one line because otherwise it gets kind of confusing. Minus 3x plus 9y plus 7. Now, if I want to... So, now that I'm saying I want to um, simplify for p, the first step is to going to remove any monomial that isn't p from this, from this side. So, we're going to want to add 3x, subtract 9y, and then subtract 7. And let's match this up, try to see if we can match this up on other constants on the other side. So, subtract 3x, um, subtract 9y. It's going to be right here. Uh, and subtract 7. Well, we don't have a 7 quite here, so this is going to go off in the distance. And then when, when we simplify this out, we're going to get negative 7y. Um, these x's are going to cancel. Minus 5z plus 4n minus 7. And then we're left with 62p. And the next step is, you guessed it, divide by 62 on both sides. And that is going to net us a pretty, I mean, basically you just take the 62 and add it to both sides, and that is basically your answer. That's what P is equal to. P is equal to actually that. You can even leave it like that, because it's going to be way too, way too big to, to deal with. So I hope you have a really good grasp on how to um, really solve these uh, equations with multiple variables. They're really not that different than isolating two variables. And as you can see, the quality of work and like the usefulness of this is like paramount. We can really do a lot with this, as you're going to see when we start uh, continuing on with Chapter 6, which deals with graphing equations. All right, um, that's, that's all I have for you guys today. See you guys next time.